<laughs> hello, hello, private blog network SEO tips. That's exactly what we will discuss in today's video. I've gotten a lot of questions recently regarding private blog networks, private blog network setups. You know, are they effective? What should I be using? Can they hurt my site? This video is going to not only give you the answers to those types of questions like, hey, what is a private blog network? Are they effective in 2022 moving into 2023? What, what even is it, right? How do you set them up? What about some tips or some hurdles that I've had to go through when potentially setting them up? So I want to fill you in on all of these answers in today's private blog network SEO tips video. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So my name is Chris Palmer. In today's private blog network SEO tips video, what I want to go ahead and answer for you is going to be first and foremost, what is a private blog network? Well, the name says it all. PBN is private blog network. So this is a, could be a magnitude of hosted sites, right? So this could be uh, ranging in niches and could be effective for any niche, right? Now, the question that arises quite consistently when we're talking about private blog networks is, are they effective? If you are under the impression or have been doing SEO and you have came to the realization that getting links from other websites is marginally important, <laughs> then yes, PBN links can be very helpful. But there's a lot of questions there right? And the questions that have to be answered are really simple. And the question is, is, is it in category that could make the link stronger? How many referring domains are behind that link that could make the link stronger? What is the anchor text from the website that you're receiving the link from that can make the link stronger, right? So there's a lot of factors that play in, but even a link from a nothing source could even have an effect inside of a closed environment. And what I mean by this is if I have a closed environment, we know that our friends like Ted Gabitis, uh, 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 Kyle Roof, you know, Clint Butler, these guys that run the tests that are in closed environments, right? When they were running tests, and I've seen these tests before because I'm a member, well, I was a member of SIA when they were doing the single variable testing, right? We could see when they were sending in Google Doc links, that if there's five sites all targeting the same thing, if I send a link here, poof, this one will shoot to the top, right? So even a link that has no value at all still passes power because it's a link, okay? So are backlinks from sites effective? Yes. So of course a PBN link is effective. So that answers that question. Now, are they safe? Well, any one link from any one source on a consistent basis, it, could potentially be harmful for your site, right? But who is the different, who is the decider of if this link is better than this link? Who's the decider? Google's the decider. So all links are created equal until Google deems them bad, right? SEMrush's toxicity report has nothing to do with what Google says, because I can guarantee if you go and look at any PR report, even if you pay somebody a G or $1,000 for a press release from the top level, I go right to Cezanne or uh, PR web, go and take a look at those news distribution sites. Go and tell me how the toxicity report looks. Pretty toxic, right? <clears throat> so that's completely irrelevant, all right? Now, some of the other questions that I've gotten and I've received. And I was just using that as an example. Nothing about their, their, that service is great. Nothing bad about the service. I, I was just using that as an example. Like these are considered or classified high quality links, but the links can sometimes come up inside of a toxicity report, right? Some people are looking at this. Some people are looking at a magnitude of factors. But to me, a link is a link is a link. And in my humble opinion, a link is either a nothing or a bonus. That's it. <clears throat> so, and I've built and bought and used all kinds of links, right? Um, so that's some of the pieces that I wanted to take care of. You know, what is a PBN? This is a group or just a small group of websites that are utilized or, or set up. They could be set up to, you know, accrue ad revenue. 
They could also maybe pitch affiliate products, but also too on the back end or on internal posts, they could be trying to maybe offer links, right? This is a private blog network. If your buddy has three sites and he sends you links, well, welcome to buying links or getting links from a PDN, right? Um, now, the question on the buying links, you know, regardless of where you get a link, right? Think to yourself, who is the top link provider, right? Whether I've exchanged a guest post or whether I've done manual outreach, right? And they charge you a fee or, or you have to give them content, which you had to pay 40 bucks for, 50 bucks for, a hundred bucks for in order to write it. Did you buy a link? Yeah, you did. So I think there's always going to be an exchange of value. Now, the type of value could vary from site to site, but let's talk about some more SEO tips, right? Like, what about when you're setting these things up? You know, a problem that was driving me completely crazy as well. Do I have to separate the IPs? Do, do they have to be separate? And, you know, I've seen a lot of separate networks or a lot of different networks where I know that they're all being housed on the same IP, right? But they're being spread out utilizing something that's called a content delivery network, right? So it started, the, the question started to arise to myself, like, is this seeable? And, and then the other piece that you've noticed too, if maybe you're using a PBN network service of some sort, I, I don't know if that's something you would want to do, but if you were, what about the name servers, right? Like where's the registrar, right? Have you been splitting up the registrations? Like how many registrations is too many registrations, right? Cause if you think about it, what is there? Snap names, jet names, right? You have Namecheap, you have GoDaddy, right? You have Google, but how many sites is too many sites, right? So these questions start, I start thinking about these things. So here's some of the answers that I've came up with, right? So when you're buying sites and you're registering them, how many millions of sites has GoDaddy registered? How many millions of sites has Google registered? How many millions of sites has Namecheap registered? So your measly little 100, 200, 300,000, 5,000 sites, does it really matter? Does it really matter, right? Now, what we what, what what we like to do is generally split them up in batches. So batches of 50 maybe would go to Namecheap. Batches of 50 would go to GoDaddy. Batches of 50 might go to Google. Batches of 50 might go to Pork Bun. Batches of 50, right? So we like to do these things in batches. So that covers the registration, right? Now, what about the name servers? Well, when we're talking about name servers, if say you're using a service or you're using anything else, this is where I usually see the, the armor being broken, right? <clears throat> I see a lot of different things like DNS simple. Um, I, you know, I, I like to spread those out as well, utilizing the custom name servers or whatever name servers that have been given to me from the registrar. Okay. Because there are so many different sites sitting on each of these registrars. I'm breaking down each of the pieces for you. Okay, stick with me. This is just some of the thoughts that, that I've had. And we have a lot of sites, okay? I've had to think about and process. I've lost money and I've lost time trying to figure these things out. And I want to be able to give it to you so you don't have to go through the same trouble. Like overanalyzing on IP is going to be a waste of time. The majority of the networks that I've seen on a consistent basis there's a lot of sites sitting on an IP. For instance, <clears throat> let's take, I, I use a service called Duda, right? Duda gives you two IPs to use, right? If you take those two IPs and look up how many sites are sitting on that IP, go right ahead, right? I probably have 20 sites sitting in there now. If you're running an agency, right? Go look, go pick those two IPs. It's what I, if you're on Duda, I guarantee I can guess your IPs, right? It's like 147 or 32172, right? How many sites are sitting there? Here, I'll answer that for you. It's 2 million sites are sitting on that IP, okay? Um, and there's, there's a litany of different um, providers or services that do this, right? Go and take a look at Amazon. Or, or your Microsoft buckets, 
Go and look at the IPs that they give you. When you go and launch an instance for EC2, go take a look and see how many sites are on that IP. Go take a look. Tons. Tons. So we, what I'm getting at is it's not an IP issue, right? So then it starts, I start thinking to myself, well, what about the CDN? What about the masking, right? And Cloudflare is well known and, and there's, there's Bunny, there's GitHub, um, JS Deliver, uh, there's OVH, right? There's tons of these CDNs that have a plethora of different IPs that you can utilize. So then I started thinking to myself, well, how many sites could I put on the same IP and then run through the CDN? And again, it comes down to those batch, that batch theory that I was talking about. 50 sitting on GoDaddy, 50 sitting on, right? You get what I'm going? You get where I'm going with this? So in my humble opinion, I do feel that it is perfectly safe and secure to go ahead and do batches at different registrars implementing those batches you know 50 or 100 onto a server right utilizing that server to then mask and hide and distribute that ip across a content delivery network this way if you were to go ahead and check the ips would actually be different right so that takes care of that issue right but then also you need a way you also too when you start thinking about scale like if you're doing five or ten for yourself right say you're a plumber or you're a doctor or a chiropractor i've set up tons of these smaller campaigns like it was nothing to go out and grab five different little host plans you know like little dollar hosts or two dollar hosts or five dollar hosts or go out there and launch right some ec2 uh instances and go ahead and utilize those that's easy to manage but what about when you get to a thousand sites or two thousand sites or three thousand sites have you ever thought about that like what it would actually take or how much money it would cost and how much time it would take to separate out each different host on each different registrar nobody's doing that nobody's doing that and and if they are then the 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 overall cost pass through to the end customer is such an astronomical cost um, that it just, it, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, it's just not scalable. It's just not scalable. It's just not. Um, all right. So we talked about registration. We talked about IP. We talked about CDN networks. Now here's another thing, right? You have a couple of options here. All right, let's clear this up. So we don't have any, um, <clears throat> So like I mentioned before, um, when we're talking about, when we're talking about uh, sites, right? I launched two separate kinds of sites, okay? I dislike WordPress, however, it's very easy to scale and here's why. Slash, I also like bootstrap sites. Now with bootstrap, you have a lot of flexibility and they are relatively easy to launch, okay? Now there's two things that you can do right? When you're buying up your sites, you're buying your expired domains. Maybe you're using Spamzilla. I don't know. Maybe you're using Domcop. I like Domcop. I like Spamzilla. We also have a, a scraper that we had a, a gentleman build that will scrape expireddomains.net because these, those two services have a lot of sites to look at, but not as many as over there on expireddomains.net. Okay. Um, where was I going with that? Uh, oh, themes. So the content and the way that you want them to look. All right. So when we're talking about WordPress, you know, it's one thing to throw up the same theme over and over. Maybe you're using a builder and you have the same look over and over, but you need to weigh to take a thousand sites, be able to launch them and make them look good. So the easiest, fastest way that I have found is free templates that will offer a demo, right? So when you're looking for themes or content, might I suggest that it has demo content? And the reason is, is because it will have images, it will have structuring, it will have formatting. It'll even install some of the plugins that you might want to utilize to make the site appear to be a lot more legitimate. Okay. Now the other option, there's two, you can utilize services that will allow you to have the 
uh, ability to go ahead and download a magnitude of different templates. And the two services that I really like are Template Monster. Okay, so there's a tool called or a, or a service called Template Monster. And as you can see, template, I, and I'm not promoting these guys. I don't have a link. It's just stuff that I use, right? Like I don't, this is an educational channel, okay? I sell service. I'm not here to pitch you products or like, like, no. I The only thing I sell is training programs and SEO services. Like I don't have a link, all right? <laughs> that's not, that's not the business that I'm in. Um, but with anyway, uh, template monster suite, right? They have everything. They even have like, if you go up here, here, check this out. Uh, if you, here, I'll show you something here. If you're looking for uh, WordPress themes with demo content, template monster. Dude, I think they have like 13,000. It's, it's really obscene. So template monster, uh, sample content, WordPress themes. Look at this, 1,800, 1,800 different themes that actually have demo content and this is only one provider so think stick with me here so you have wordpress that has a free section right like you know how you're on normal wordpress and you can like type in like a, a theme that you want so you have all those free themes then you have template monster here's 1800 that guaranteed have demo content and then there's another one right and the the next one that's really cool is called envato unlimited all right Invato Unlimited. No, I don't have a link and I, it's, I'm not promoted, but I wish they'd promote me. <laughs> that would be sweet. These guys are huge, but no, they don't. They don't, they don't even know who Chris Palmer is, but hopefully I can help you save some time because I was banging my head off the wall trying to figure out a way to launch a lot of sites quickly that actually looked good. And the fastest, easiest way to do that is utilizing demo content. All right. Now, of course, when you launch the demo content, it's going to be in lorem ipsum and or in Latin, right? And that's kind of a pain in the butt. So you have to templatize things after you launch your template, right? So I shared with you Envato templates, right? Envato Elements Unlimited. It's like 12 bucks a month or like 100 bucks a year. This right here, you pay them like 50 bones. Look, they got it. They're, they're just trying to give this stuff away, right? These guys have a deal, all right? But the next thing and the next hurdle is templatizing each of the things that you're doing. Now, what? think about a website. So I have the homepage up that's going to be branded off of the expired or the auction domain that we buy, right? So say I buy Vacuum Cleaner World, right? So say it's vacuumcleanersworld.com, okay? Uh, Oh, this site doesn't even work. So say you did have Vacuum Cleaner World. That, it just popped in my head. Say you own Vacuum Cleaner World, right? You would find either a vacuum or a home services theme or something that would kind of match like what the site's about in a way, right? You throw that theme up, you erase all the other pages, all the demo content. You take that page, you edit it to make sure it's all branded on the homepage. Then you clean off all of the filler stuff and then you duplicate the page. Now, why would you do that? To keep the header and the footer and the formatting for the other pages. But what other pages do you need to have to have a legitimate site? Well, as you know, you're probably going to need, oh, this is for something else. You're going to need to have a news or a blog section. So blog, right? So let's let, think, think about it, right? So what I'm getting at here is you need to templatize the pages that you need to create. This will speed up your process immensely, all right? So when you get in there, private blog network SEO tips, right? When you get in there, you need to have your news slash blog section, right? Two is going to be the home slash, this is gonna be branded, whatever the brand is that you buy, right? Number three, and we're gonna talk, stick with me, we're gonna talk about the auctions and we'll talk about expired and, and you know the differences between the two, all right? Stick with me, I got more info for you, all right? So I'll save you tons of time later. Uh, news and blog, home is branded, right? But then you're gonna need your filler pages. You're gonna need a contact, okay? So I, I need you to think about these things when you're launching out your sites, right? Like think about this stuff. Like what's a contact page look like, right? How about a privacy? 
right? You need to templatize a privacy, kind of like, like this, right? So say you were to templatize something. So in order to make a template to, to help you out, you know, you want to leave sections where you can just fill in the blank, right? So like email shows up a lot. The site name shows up a lot, right? You need to templatize it so it's easy to scale, productize it, okay? This will help you out immensely. Now let's talk about like what else, right? Privacy. What else would you want to templatize, right? What about a copyright? Okay. Uh, two fours? Probably not. <laughs> so contact, privacy, copyright. Okay. Uh, six, you have your terms page. Okay. Seven, you might want to do GDRP. Okay. You can sometimes include that, but I like to even have these. And the reason why I want to launch them individually is because I want as much filler text as possible or filler content because generally new sites, normal business owners have all kinds of filler garbage on their site. They don't just go right in there and start hammering away, right? They just don't. Normal people just don't do this. They take their time. They fill out and they, it's their baby. They take care of it. And, and that's how you have to look at each of the sites as if it's a real site because it is, right? Just because we're going to be utilizing the sites or the properties in order to generate some sort of ad revenue, perhaps, or secondary affiliate commission, and on the back end, perhaps sell homepage links and or internal links, right? Just because we're doing that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be treating the sites as if they're a real website, right? So you have to set them up and make them look as though they are, right? So a registrar on a unique IP or unique-ish IP you have, right? It's hidden on a CDN, it runs fast, it has the plugins, it has your themes, or you could perhaps use Bootstrap and we'll talk about that in a second. Copyright terms, GDRP. Um, eight, you're probably gonna have the about, okay? So this is probably really what you're gonna end up having. News, the homepage, contact, privacy, copyright terms, GDRP, about. Okay. Um, and if I'm missing anything, you can let me know about it, but that's pretty much your, these are the pages that you need to templatize. Okay. Uh, stick with me. Give me one second. Give me one second. Let me take care of Roni here. Here you go, Hayes. Here, you can have this. Dogs harassing me. I had to pour them out a quick little bottle of water here. <laughs> so in any case, uh, templatizing the asset is going to greatly help your execution. Okay. Um, now, Bootstrap versus WordPress. All right, let's talk about that. Now, with Bootstrap, you have a ton of options. All right. Now, we've already been shown these types of things, right? Now, please remember, when you get this type of site, they also offer something that's called Bootstrap. And Bootstrap is a type of CSS that works very well with HTML. Now, when you're launching your blogs, you have a lot of options, right? You can rebuild it or semi-rebuild it, right? A new theme, make it on WordPress, make it look pretty, right? Or another fast way to do things is I could just launch it from the Wayback Machine, right? Now, if you never heard of the Wayback Machine or the uh, web.archive, Okay, so you have the web archive. What you can do is, let's say that you buy, I don't know, chrispalmerseo.com. Okay, say you were to go out there and buy that, right? And you bought this, you go to the page, right? Or the pages, or you get the best snapshot, and you would actually launch the website how it was. The design, the words, the headers, everything, but you do it in HTML format. Now, why would you do that? The reason is that you want to speed, speed. That's the only reason because I want to be able to get them up, get them up fast and I want it to be in speed. But please note, if you're doing a private blog network, I need the other pages to look kind of good, right? Because you could be offering them uh, for sale. You could also be maybe pitching or offering some type of affiliate offers, right? So I need a way to make the rest of the site look kind of good. And plus I need some type of template. I need, I need... You know, right? It needs to have some kind of look to it. So what I have found to be the best is Bootstrap. Now, 
Again, when you have Envato or Template Monster, it makes it very easy to get a plethora of bootstrap. Here, I'll show you this. Okay. If you come over here, Envato, uh, they might even have a section. I think they do. I think this is the one we were using, or it was either. Uh, I think I was getting them off of the other one, but let me hear. Bootstrap. All I'm getting at is Bootstrap is another CSS slash uh, HTML type format that you can utilize if you just want to just scoop up, say, 50, 60, 70 domains, get them launched exactly how they were, and then start building new pages, right? You want to get them up, get them indexed, start flipping links, right? I'm just saying, you know, this is a possibility and this will help you out massively, all right? Now, uh, we talked about Bootstrap and what's that? what that is used for. That's if you're going to launch from the Wayback Machine and just do an HTML build out. Rebuilding out uh, WordPress, if you want them to look good, you have your free themes, you have Envato, you have uh, Template Monster, right? And then you have a lot more control over things. We talked about CDNs, we talked about IPs, we talked about masking IPs. Um, what else? Oh, we also talked about what is a PBN, how a PBN is used. Is it going to be effective? Can it hurt your site, right? Um... Some other things to look for, okay? Let's let's talk about this. All right. Let's let let me use an example. When you're buying up these sites, if I can give you any big piece of information, right? Like you know all the 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 normal stuff like every like I looked on YouTube, like people just regurgitate the same junk over and over and over. Like, oh, you gotta look at the anchor text. You gotta look at, you know, is there any Chinese text? Listen, I don't care if there's Chinese text. I don't care what the anchor text is. What I do care about is if that 93% of the anchor text is Chinese and I can't read it, that's a problem. But if I'm looking down the list of anchor text and four or five rows are like one or basically under 5% of the overall anchor text diversity is Chinese, I don't care. And if I'm looking at the anchor text profile and the profile is shifting towards anything more than 15% and it's nothing that's actually branded, if it's not generic, I, I generally don't want it. Like it doesn't matter what it says. What matters is what is the overall anchor text diversity? What really matters when you're buying these sites is referring domains, right? The anchor text matters, don't get me wrong. But if it's if it's not heavily weighted towards something that's bad or something that doesn't matter, then who cares? If it has a 2% anchor text density of Chinese writing, who cares, right? Or whatever language it is, okay? Don't worry about it. Like that's nothing, who cares, okay? But this is the stuff that I see being spewed and, and, and regurgitated consistently. I saw a video in like 2014, some dude was going through and it's like, some, they just kept like replicating people's videos. I was like, ah, this is crazy, right? Um. I probably watched three. It was like the same video. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is madness. Um, I'll give you a quick little run through, right? Let's say you're using this tool. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all. This is an easy one. And I got a free or a complimentary month um, because I'm friends with somebody that got it for me. Okay. That's why I'm using it. Not promoting it. I don't have a link and I certainly don't consistently use it on an everyday basis, right? But I was able to get this tool in order to test it out. So I'm playing with it, okay? With that said, when we're going down the list here, all right, what we look at, as you can see here, is I made a filter. So let's go take a look at my filter. What matters to Chris when I'm looking at domains? Let's, well, let's go take a look. Well, SZ score is set to 40 or lower. I'm looking for expired. I don't care what the site language is. I don't care what the anchor text is. Okay. I'm looking for a DR of 20 or better and everything else. I really don't care because I want to see what they have. I have to see it. I want to see it. I need to see it. Right? So that's what I'm looking for. And then I start my process then because just because you see it in this tool, this is something that I figured out quite quickly is just because I'm looking down this list here of referring domains here. Just because, let's say this one here, just because this says 400, right? See how this FRS modeling says 400? Well, I can I can guarantee you, because I just looked at this one not too long ago, if you go out here to the backlink checker, 
backlink dash checker. Okay. And you come in here and you toss that little baby in there. Right. And you check those backlinks of the whole thing, subdomains and all. It's got 17 linking websites and a DR9. Right. But when we come back over to here, we can see here that the DR score is actually a 22 with 402 referring domains, wildly off. So if I could give you that any little piece of information, don't rely on any one tool. Double check things, right? Double check because things happen. Like as time progresses, the domains and the links fall off, especially out of the tools. And just because it looks like a winner now, when you launch that site, doesn't mean it's going to be a winner later. Also, when you're looking at this uh, site or you're looking at historical information, don't ever bet on every single link coming back or the once powerful domain coming back because I have literally a batch of 100 that had 500 referring domains or more and were DR30s when I bought them. We launched them, set them up exactly how they were. And literally almost a hundred of them has dropped either in referring domains or overall power of the site. Okay. So be very careful on what you're getting. At first we were just ripping and running, buying as fast as we possibly could, getting them set up and then sifting, right? But now we've been taking our time and I just wanted to give you some tips when you're buying sites. If you have any questions about private blog networks, get them in right now. I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, if you want me to clarify anything, ask and I'll clarify it with you right now. If there's anything that I haven't covered that you want me to cover about private blog networks or SEO tips, go ahead and ask and I'll be happy to answer it right now. But if there's nothing else in the next two or three minutes, that's going to wrap it up for today. My name is Chris Palmer. If you have any future questions related to private blog networks or SEO, SEO tips, feel free to ask in the section below. And of course, I always look forward to seeing you in the next private blog network SEO tips video. Have a blessed day. I'll hang tight real quick here for some questions, if you have any. But uh, yeah, I think that was pretty much about it, what I wanted to cover. Um, we'll do a quick recap here while I uh, wait for a couple questions. All right. So quickly, what did we cover or talk about today? How about what is a PBN, right? Number two, what, what else did we talk about? Um, uh, um, are PBNs effective? Okay. Are PBNs harmful? Okay. Will PBNs work in 2024? Right? So we answered those questions first. What is a PBN? It's a private blog network. It's a collective of sites that are utilized for a magnitude of reasons. One of those reasons being linking to other sites that could be in the same niche. I left something out before. I got on a small rant when we were talking about the expired domains and I I left out the most important thing, right? When people are looking at sites, okay? If you go watch anyone else's stuff except for mine, I didn't watch everyone's. I'm, I'm sure Craig Campbell and anybody really respectable, I'm sure they're, they're, they got you on the right track, but I didn't watch every video, right? But some of the videos at the top, okay? We'll say this, right? Um, some of the things that they point out are going to be, you know, looking at the name, to, for for me, I, I never cared what the name was. Another thing that people look at is the age. Yes, I generally want a site that's quote unquote in authority mode. So older than a year. I don't want it to be in the, hey, what is this site? What niche is it? What category is it? Like, you know, I want it to be of age. Okay. The next thing that I'm definitely going to be looking at is, well, how many referring domains does the site have? What's the DR? What's the TF? right? So DR and TF are primarily what I'm looking at. I'm also then going to go in and take a look at how many hands has it changed, right? So how many owners, kind of like a Carfax for a car, right? Like, hey, if it was a gambling site, then a pharmacy site, then a triple X site, and now it's a Joe's Plumber site, the probability of Joe's Plumber working out good is, is very low. It's very low. It's very, very low. 
it's it's too many it's too many hops it's too many ideas google's google's like a on sensory overload they're like what is this right it's just true you know so i i do look at how many hands um the next thing that i really like to look at other than referring domains and and dr and tf is going to then be the anchor text now what i mean by anchor text and let's just take a look at one right so let's take a look at this here we'll go look at one together so you can get an idea okay so this one it's saying that it's 100 percent chinese so that's not going to work let's take a look at this one okay uh this would not be something that i would buy and the reason is, is that there's not really enough referrings i mean it could work but probably not it's very hard to find um, good quality uh, expired sites. You know, you're like you're generally gonna have a hard time. Uh, but what I'm looking at, this is another thing. How long has it been down? Like if it's been down longer than 90 days, uh-uh, no, no, no. Because the probability of all those links coming back is very low. Like, yeah, once upon a time, there might've been 12,000 links, but that, look at this site's been down longer than a year. Like. What, what do you think the chances of me getting them links back is? You know? I, I, I guarantee you lose 60, 70%. I guarantee it. I guarantee you lose 60, 70%. M maybe less. You might get lucky. You know, I've, ha I've gotten lucky. Don't get me wrong. But you want to put yourself in the best position possible. It's, it's not about, you know, it's about optimization, right? I want to do the least amount of work for the most amount of result. And I think that's true for everyone. I would assume, I would think, right? So uh, yeah, the next thing I'm gonna look at is going to be the anchor text, right? So I like to see anchor text. And, and now let's talk about this, um, like what we spoke about before, right? Uh, when I'm looking down this list here, you know, like a big majority, if, if there's, there, I don't see the percentages here, so that's interesting. But when I'm looking at these anchor texts, if I know that the site has that the site has a hundred different um, anchor texts, and let's just say I think it was nineteen thousand backlinks. If thirty five hundred of those backlinks say Blake Camu Limited Jersey, right? Limited Jersey, like if if I'm in the sports niche, right? If I'm in the sports niche, if I'm in the Jersey niche, if I'm in if my name's Blake, <laughs> right, uh, this this probably might have a good value, right? If this is in the sports or jersey niche, this is probably going to be something that's going to work. But the point that I really want to get to and the thing that if, if you forget everything else, when you're buying domains, the most important thing, and I've bought in tons, I've launched tons of sites. Something that I've realized that matters the most is this tip right here. And I'm going to give it to you now. And it's all about this. If you're going into a marketplace, okay, let's say that you want to go and win uh, Los Angeles DUI lawyer, okay? Now, yes, your on page, the amount of pages, the internal linking, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that has to be on point. But we're talking about getting links and buying links. This is the piece that matters the most if you're setting up a PBM, okay? One of the most important things, all right? Other than referring domains, that's a big one. Uh, the referring domains and this thing right here that I'm about to show you, those are the two that matter the most, point blank. Everything else could be overlooked. If you have a high referring domain count, a high authority score, and this thing right here. If I wanna go and win a uh, lawyer in Los Angeles, okay? What, what 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 I would highly recommend that you look at when you're buying sites for a PBN is look at the top performing website and see this thing right here called Topical Trust Flow. See the categories that the links that have been built in are in. That matters. That matters this much. Anchor text matters this much, right? The name of the site matters this much. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And don't look at the secondary. It's this society. So everything's a business category, but see how this is society, society, law, society, government, right? 
but society type links. Because if I go and buy, if I go buy a bunch of society sites, even though it might not be society law, if I'm getting society, I'm getting in the link graph. If I can get in the link graph, I can rank. Trust me. So this is the key. I could give, if you forget everything else, remember this. High referring domains, high trust, make sure it's on category and run. You'll, you'll do very, very well. Very, very well. Now, here's another thing. Expired versus auction. So this, this is what, you know, if you're, if you have a, a let's say that you have a DUI in LA, uh, a, a client, right? If it's just one, one little client. Okay. Would it make sense for me and go buy auction domains at two to 500 bucks a piece plus set them up plus get the theme, plus set them up, plus pay for hosting, plus pay for management, plus I have to keep it updated. Is it going to be worth it for one client that's a very high ticket? It could be. But when we're talking about scale or say you have a lot of clients or maybe you have a lot of projects, it just won't end up making sense. Because if I have to go out there and spend $500 for the, I have to go buy, spend $500, plus I'm gonna spend another 70 bucks setting it up, right? And now if you're setting it up for yourself and you're not doing any of the shortcuts like what we mentioned today, let's say you have to go buy um, your speed plugin, right? Start, start adding up the numbers. Like you'll have to work for the dude for 90 days just to get your money back on the build. See what I'm saying? So auction domains can be great. And yes, they never drop. But when we're talking about scale, it's not scalable. It's not scalable unless you're rich and I'm not rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It For me, again, it goes back to I need the most amount of result for the least amount of effort, right? And 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 money, what's money? Equated time. So if I have to spend all my money that I worked on in order to get this, it's just for me, it's not worth it. It's a lot easier to wait your time, get your expired. If you find really good deals that are super on target in an auction or... You know, there's a lot of services out there like uh, SEO.domain, Sir Links a lot. Um, you know, these guys have inventory, right? There's tons of providers out there, right? People, they go and find the domains for you and they have high referring domains. They're already clean. They're already indexed. Like you could, you know, you could buy those. I've used their service before, but you're going to pay a premium. You know, so hopefully that helps you out. Let's see if you have any questions. WordPress subdomains. Ah, uh, that's an interesting thing, but it's still the same thing, really. Um, and I'm not going to set up. It still has the same group. Like, show me an example of a website ranking in a competitive market that has gotten there off the back of WordPress subdomains. I'll wait. <laughs> right? No. Nah. Maybe a couple other links, yes. But generally, we need unique referring domains at a very high level from the right category. That's what, that's what we're looking to build out. So as far as the subdomains, yeah, maybe, and it's cool or it's a little trick, but... The probability of it actually doing anything is very low. And I'm sure there could be one or two studies or maybe even a few outliers in which a low to medium competition uh, competitive keyword is winning off of this type of thing. But nothing worth actual money. And definitely not in the United States too, by the way. Let's throw that in there. Because <laughs> uh, I have seen some really wicked case studies in non-US markets that, you know, I've seen all kinds of trickery work, right? But when we're talking about high competition, high profit margin keywords um, in competitive niches, that stuff doesn't fly. I need high quality, high powered referring domains and spot on, uh, on page with super tight internal linking, period, end of statement for winning anything of any type of substance. Just is what it is, you know? Uh... Hello, I learned the hard way to remember to link to other sites than my own 
on my own network of sites. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's fair. Um, I'm a trader and I'm trying hands-on blogging. Saw your video yesterday for the first time. And so far in 24 hours, have consumed around 10 hours of your videos. Thank you, uh, Metavasi. I appreciate that. I hope that you're learning a lot with me and I hope you enjoyed it. I also add a gallery. Very smart move. The Jumbo Show says all that stuff do not work anymore. People just burn their domain doing that now. Uh, I'm not sure what which thing we're talking about, um, but uh, I, I, I appreciate your feedback. Enlighten us, Jumbo Show. Um, clip catch WordPress domains. WordPress subdomains. Uh, oh, we talked about that. I'm not really a fan of the WordPress subdomains. Um, just caught the end. Archivax to restore from any uh back machine ah uh, um to be honest I, I've been actually using a um, SEO content machine for that you just throw in the uh, date and it kicks you out the stuff that's what I've been using to be honest with you uh, it works quick it works fast and then you can post via email works very very well um so yeah I mean you could use a service like that uh, that's not who we were using initially. Um, we were doing uh, full build outs there for a while, but we were using um, Wayback Machine website um, uh, downloader site builds. I think it's like Wayback Machine Builder. Oh, here it is right here. So we were using this one. This is the exact one. He actually upped this price a dollar. Um, but this, this is the service that we were using right here. So this one worked a little bit better in my apparent, uh, in my experience. I know that it's not free, but it was 11 bucks. It's done. Plus it goes past the, the thousand pages. It'll do whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, again, I'm not promoting it. I mean, they're all equal. Everybody's equal to me. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's just something that I've used and I enjoyed and it was cheap and uh, that's what we did. All right. Uh, I'm curious to see what this site looks like back in. Uh... Oh, wow. Dude, look at this. Was this back in 2020? Look at this. In December of 2020, that's when I figured out these zero things. Dude, I've been doing this since then. Like, I remember when I figured this out, um, I thought I was like, dude, I, I, I felt so cool. This is when I started to realize, but zeros in the headers does not work, right? I, I actually just did this for a contest. You, you may or may not have saw it, but for SEO Rockstars uh, 2022, there was a little contest for the conference. I know it's old news, but I'm proud of it. Right? So I want to show you. I'm, I'm proud. Okay? So when you take a look at this, and, and then I use this to explain that, you know, spending $10 a hundred words or $20 a hundred words is completely insane because I assure you that Google cannot read. And this is yet another example. And I love Google. Don't get me wrong. But once you figure out the count, like what's the word count, right? What words do I need? Do I need the word Google? Do I need the word event? Right? You can fill in the rest, but you cannot use uh, zeros for headers. But you could see back in the day, this is when I was learning this particular strategy. I was starting to figure out that, I, oh, I can use numbers. Right? This is back in uh, 2020. Uh, I actually did another contest back then with uh, Craig and Holly. We were trying to rank for digital marketing Las Vegas. Let's see who could rank uh, the highest in 30 days or less for uh, Los Angeles digital mar or um, Las Vegas digital marketing. Yep, and I ranked number seven in less than 30 days with this site right here. <laughs> and you had to do it with a new domain, so that was kind of cool. Uh, this was just another page I built out some supporting pieces of content, and what I did is I used the zeros. 
Look at this picture. <laughs> That's so old and funny. Anyway, any other questions? It is okay to go KGR method for new website. I have never utilized that strategy. That's completely up to you. I I couldn't even tell you. I, I don't use it. I simply just don't use it. I, I just don't do the math that way, right? That's me. I don't see anything wrong with targeting keywords that not a lot of people are targeting, right? It just makes sense, right? So if that, if that's what you want to utilize, uh, uh, Bisholt Roy, definitely, man, for sure. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Um, anything else that we can uh, talk about? If not, that's going to wrap it up for today's private blog network SEO tips. I wanted to definitely put out something. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I wanted to thank you. I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I hope that you have a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I'll have some uh, Black Friday deals coming up here pretty soon. Uh yeah, we'll have a lot of stuff. So thank you so much. I don't see any questions here. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Hopefully you enjoyed the tips. Hopefully it's been helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Or not goodbye. I'll see you later. <laughs>